untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at some blue black ninjas as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a deck made possible thanks to the recent additions in Jumpstart Historic Horizons, which introduced all these ninjas to historic, and one of those is Ingenious Infiltrator, 4 mana for a 2-3 Vidalcan ninja, but it also has a ninjutsu for just a blue and a black, which means we can return an unblocked attacker we control back to our hand, and then put this card onto the battlefield from our hand tapped and attacking, so it can hit the opponent unopposed right away, and in this case, whenever a ninja we control deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card, so the infiltrator will draw a card right away, and if we have any other ninjas, those will also start providing extra card advantage. So the best combo with these ninjutsu creatures is to have cheap evasive creatures that will allow us to attack unblocked so we can sneak our ninjas into play, and it doesn't get any cheaper than the zero mana ornithopter, the O2 flyer that we can play on turn 1 alongside another 1 drop potentially, and then on turn 2 we can already sneak something like infiltrator into play and start drawing extra cards. Then another ninja is a ninja of the deep hours, which is a 4 mana 2-2 two -two with a ninjutsu for just 1 and a blue, and whenever the ninja deals combat damage to a player we get to draw a card, so very similar to the infiltrator, a bit easier to cast but doesn't affect other ninjas. And then we also have the full playset of Mist Syndicate Naga, this is one of our main finishers that can deal a ton of damage very quickly, 3 mana for a 3-1 Naga Ninja with a Ninjutsu for 2 and a blue, and whenever Mist Syndicate Naga deals combat damage to a player we get to create a token that's a copy of Mist Syndicate Naga, and that token will also have this very same ability, so all those tokens can start duplicating and making more and more ninjas. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we've got some more cheap evasive creatures with Fairy Seer at 1 mana, a 1-1 one, one Fairy Wizard with flying that when it enters a battlefield lets us scry 2, so great for setting up our future draws, especially when we're going to be drawing extra cards with Ninja of the Deep Hours and Ingenious Infiltrator, and then picking up our Fairy Seer with Ninjutsu means we can replay the Fairy to once again scry 2, so that's very useful. And finally we also have the full playset of Changeling Outcast, which is a 1-1 shapeshifter with Changeling, so it has all creature types, including Ninja, which is very relevant alongside Ingenious Infiltrator, because it means that our Outcast will draw cards if it hits the opponent, and drawing cards with the Infiltrator in play is very easy, because the Outcast is unblockable, although it also cannot block, so we will be turning it sideways turn after turn, and perfect for enabling Ninjutsu. And then the rest of our deck has some cheap interaction, we've got 6 1 mana discard spells to take away removal spells from the opponent so they cannot disrupt our ninjas, with 4 copies of Inquisition of Kozilek to take away non-land cards with mana value 3 or less, and 2 copies of Thoughtseize which can take any non-land card at the cost of 2 life. And then we also have some cheap removal spells with a full playset of Fatal Push, and we're very good at enabling Revolt in this deck, because picking up one of our creatures with Ninjutsu also counts as one of our permanents leaving the battlefield, so that allows us to kill creatures with mana value 4 or less for just 1 mana. And then we also have the full playset of Unsummon as a cheap bounce spell to temporarily get an opposing creature out of the way, great if we're out-tempoing the opponent and drawing additional cards with our ninjas at the same time, and can also be used in a pinch to save one of our own creatures from removal, especially useful in control matchups where the opponent's not going to present many creatures for us to bounce. This card will be replaced in a couple days with Fading Hope, which is just a strictly better version of Unsummon. And then the mana base includes a few dual lands, with 4 copies of Watery Grave, 4 Drowned Catacomb and 4 of the Blue Black Pathway, and then 4 basic swamps, 4 basic islands and 2 copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant as an extra creature land that can help us close out the game. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand is missing an enabler. Do have two discard spells and then two ninjas up against the Lurus deck. Hmm, this is tough. Having Inquisition and Thoughtseize is nice. Maybe we'll still try it and then rely on Hardcast, Miss Cynic and Naga. And our opponent on the Spirit Dancer deck, so getting to snipe that Spirit Dancer is pretty huge. Could even take Hateful Eidolon and then take Spirit Dancer next turn. Uh, which is also reasonable. They can answer my Naga pretty easily with Deadweight and Favor, so I might have to keep Thoughtseize to actually take Lurus. 
but then the hateful Eidolon is going to be there, drawing them cards in the meantime, so... Yeah, I think it's take Eidolon, Thoughtseize, Spirit Dancer, hope they don't draw another one. And then we don't have a plan in place yet to deal with Lurus, unfortunately. Fatal push. So do we want to trade for Missinigenaga is a question. Feels pretty bad to do so, although as soon as I play an enabler like Ornithopter or one of my one drops, the opponent's probably going to kill those too. So maybe we do have to play Ornaga and just run them out of removal eventually. If they escape Mogus' favor, they also lose the ability to replay those cards out of their graveyard with Lurus. And if they put Lurus in hand this turn, we get to hit them with a Naga. So Mogus's favor it is. And then I could do the same with Naga. Or play Ninja of the Deep Hours. Although they can also deadweight it. Hmm. If I play Naga, what are the chances that they escape Mogus's favor? It's pretty unlikely. So I could also do nothing. Maybe wait for another discard spell, or wait for an enabler to at least hit them once. Opponent does now put Lurus in hand. So now we can both Fairy Seer and Naga. Inquisition's probably okay. So now that they play Lurus, we can Fatal push it. It's gonna be Stram into... Removal, presumably. Or Demonic Vigor to protect Stram. And a dead weight. That's too bad. So I can hit with Fairies here. Let's see what we draw. And then have a look with Inquisition. Take Lurus. Bottom, bottom. And then uh, Sram happens on casts. I think we still wait for them to cast more auras and then Fatal Push Sram as opposed to killing it right away. So we can maybe get uh, the blocker out of the way so Ninja can connect. Another Sentinel's Eyes. Yeah, that happens. Need a good draw. And summon, I guess, is good enough. Ghost form to protect. Although it doesn't really protect against a bounce spell. Just need to keep connecting with this ninja. Can also fire up Hive. Opponent can escape Sentinel's eyes.
And then what do we exile? Let's go with Amogus' favor. Spirit Dancer in the graveyard shouldn't matter anymore now that Lurse is dealt with. Thought Seize takes Outcast, but it's gonna cost them two life. So their opponent is getting dangerously low. So they do have a Spirit Dancer, however, which is very scary. We have five points of evasive damage between Fairy Seer and Hive, although opponent's got two blockers. Another Unsummon is a great draw. So that should force a trade with Sram and Ninja. And we'll exile one of those Sentinel's Eyes now. And hopefully double Fairy Seer is enough to cross the finish line here. Alongside our Creature Land, which has put in a ton of work. Five cards in hand, four mana. Double Spirit Dancer. Cartouche, yeah, that stops the Hive. Can they find two answers for Fairy Seer? A removal spell. Nope, they cannot. And oof, that was a very close one against Black White Auras. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand is missing a ninja, so can't really keep it. This is better. And then I can probably afford to bottom a land. And uh, we'll make it pathway. Can afford to keep up Fatal Push at the cost of two life. Opponent on a colorless deck. So points towards the artifact ramp deck, most likely. Definitely get to see Ornithopter Shine here, letting us redeploy it for free to set up our next ninja. And then we can Inquisition too. Fountain to gain two. And a Mind Stone. Alright, I guess we'll double Infiltrator instead. So we get to draw four. And then hope to pick up more discard spells. Take a tomb. So our opponent does still have some scary cards in hand that we can't really interact with all that much. They can ramp into Karn and get all sorts of sideboard cards. Just gotta try and kill them as soon as possible and uh, Naga's probably our best candidate for that. So, let's get in there. It's a lot of cards. All right, and then we can deploy a Changeling Outcasts. And discard some lands we don't need. Zero points facing down lethal. Hedron Archive. It's not gonna be enough here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. Fairy Seer to set up turn to Infiltrator. And a few removal spells for creatures. So I wouldn't mind 
Inquisition as interaction. So next turn we can draw lands. Plus Inquisition if Infiltrator works out. Could be awkward if the Fairy Seer dies. Opponent on a life gain deck with the Johnny's Welcome. So next turn we could triple one drop, depending on what else we draw with Infiltrator. Double welcome. Alright, so could play Fairy Seer first, although maybe we just want Ornithopter and then spend our mana elsewhere. So it's probably okay to just hit with the Infiltrator first, see what we pick up. And maybe that changes my play. Although I'm very likely to play the Seer here anyway. Yeah. And then we want to scry before drawing. I wouldn't mind the land. Ninja of the Deep Hours and Outcast are both decent draws. So I could keep both. And then this turn play the Outcast, do next turn set up Ninja, although we have an Infiltrator in hand as well, so Ninja of the Deep Hours doesn't seem super necessary. And then this turn we can Inquisition, Outcast, Ornithopter to set up Infiltrator. And our opponent was saving their Hajani's Pride Mates. Uh, yeah, that seems fine. Still a fatal push anyways, but... Probably the scarier of all the creatures with double welcome. And then Infiltrator, thanks to Ornithopter, means we have three ninjas hitting the opponent to draw six cards. It's going to be difficult for them to overcome. Don't even have to Fatal Push necessarily, I doubt my opponent's jumping. And that's a lot of triggers. can set up our Naga for next turn, and then for now, how do we like Ornithopter, an extra Outcast, and keep up Fatal Push Unsummon. Aha, uh -huh, Scurry Oak, Sir Points got the Scurry Oak combo with Heliod, and uh, yeah, that is potentially a way for them to combo off infinitely. Puts a counter on the oak. And that makes a squirrel. This is not an infinite combo. Just makes a few creatures. So I guess we wanna just fatal push here. Killed Aspirin. Probably should have done so earlier before they got the extra squirrel. That's okay. And then keep on summon to break up the combo. Or we could bounce the Scurry Oak right now, since he won't be able to combo me next turn anyway. Yeah, that's also fine. Pretty happy if they chum block with the Squirrel, since decking is now my primary concern. Although I could always pick up a ninja or not attack with the changeling outcast. But who wants to pass up this opportunity? Inquisition can take the oak as well. Uh, 
Alright, and then discard to hand size. And yeah, this should do it. Opponent cannot even top deck into Collected Company and the two combo pieces with only three lines available. They can still Light of Hope to gain four. Maybe that keeps them alive. I don't think we're decking. with all. So opponent can go up to 15. And I think we can still kill them pretty easily here. With, uh, let's draw the most amount of cards possible. Sadly our opponent will be dead before we get to draw all those cards. But we can do the math here with triple infiltrator and three, four, five, six, seven, eight ninjas. That's uh, 16, 24, plus another from the Ninja of the Deep Hours. We'll be drawing 25 cards. Yeah, it's a pretty good deal. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. This hand has lots of enablers, but no payoff cards with ninjutsu, so we'll take a mulligan. This is a better mix, so won't be able to Inquisition on turn one, unfortunately, but it's still probably a keep. And then we get to Infiltrator on two, start interacting on turn three. Probably still fine to play the Drowned Catacomb here, in case next turn we pick up a Swamp and want to double one drop for some reason. Opponent on black white zombies. Alright, can play the hive. And then we'll let them keep Crib Breaker for a turn to get this infiltrator going. Alright, and replay Ornithopter. So next turn we can triple one drop. Maybe clear a path for Infiltrator so it can keep attacking. So could attack with Infiltrator, see if they want to double block for some reason. Probably fine to play the Fairy first to scry. Fatal push seems fine. I'm not gonna ninjutsu with Ornithopter, but... Probably not going to block with it either. Opponent does go for the double block, so we'll fatal push the auger. And then Inquisition. Alright, so Diagraph is probably the scarier of the zombies here. Opponents with Liliana untouched by death, also quite scary. They might have the infinite combo featuring the Shambling Ghast. So now I don't have a way of enabling Revolt for Fatal Push to get rid of this Lord. Not the most exciting turn coming up. Just sitting with Fairy Seer. And there's Liliana. If it tries to take out my fairy, we can kill the Lord, but just gonna plus to fill the graveyard and drain us for two. Alright, land means I can at least activate Hive of the Eye Tyrants. And we'll go after Liliana. 
and exile. What's the scariest creature here? Maybe servants as part of their combo. Although they already have corpse knights in hand, so doesn't matter too much. Another lord. So infiltrator's not gonna have an easy time getting in. One person's trash is another woman's army. Another infiltrator, that helps. So infiltrator only draws cards if it deals damage to a player. So I could take out Liliana or I could draw a bunch of cards and hit Liliana for one, which is probably the preferred play. And then, do I even attack with Infiltrator here? Probably still no point, even though I could Fatal Push and take out Lord. So Ornithopter goes face, Fairy Seer, and Liliana. And then this will draw two, thanks to both Infiltrators being in play. Inquisition, and Watery Grave. Well, we know they have Jump Palm as their last card, so... Inquisition not super relevant. Alright, we'll just pass it back. Company, that's a good one. Just hits a single Wayward Servant, that's acceptable. Still gonna hang on to Fatal Push to maybe break up the combo if they ever get close to assembling it. Or maybe catch the opponent off guard. Alright, Ninja of the Deep Powers is great. I think I still am in favor of drawing cards as opposed to killing Liliana, although Liliana's doing a lot of work too. Draw three. And then Thought Seize will save me a little bit of damage over opponent cycling the jump on. And then do I want to fatal push a Lord of the Accursed? Maybe. Enabled Revolt by picking up our Ornithopter. Into the grave with you. Another Liliana. That one could minus. Replay a one drop out of the graveyard. That's not too scary. Just kills an Infiltrator. Missing a Kanagas. Excellent. Alright, now I... I think it might be time to take out Liliana. And then Fairy Seer can go face all the Dewey. Yeah, I guess it's only drawing me one card at this point. Although we don't get to make a copy if we attack the Planeswalker. So maybe we do still let the opponent drain us for a little bit here. And get to Ninjutsu. Another fairy to scry. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice hand. Assuming no disruption on the Ornithopter. Opponent the mill deck. So, let's have a look. Okay, so counter spells we can get past with our ninjutsu, so that's not too much of a concern. Although I guess I could counter the ornithopter, which would be a little bit annoying. So I'll take the sensor. Because yeah, next turn we can ninjutsu the infiltrator. 
replay Ornithopter, which they could then censor afterwards. And then we want to set up our Messinic and Naga. And all those three mana counter spells will be useless. Now by drawing cards we're helping the opponent somewhat, but they don't seem to have a ton of mill engines available, so I'm not too concerned. With ninjutsu we're not casting the creature. So it does get past those three mana counters, which is quite relevant here. Now they could counter Ornithopter, potentially. So I could not play the Ornithopter. Sure. Alright, so the Naga gets to attack, so I could attack with all, see what happens, maybe bait with Ornithopter first, see if they feel like countering that for some reason. Alright, they do. Thirty-one cards remain, so... Yeah, let's attack with all. I could bounce a Secret Keeper, but then they can mill me with it again. Let's attack first. Opponent is chomping the Nagas. Picked up another one, which we can now resolve. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn one, we get to keep up our one mana interaction. And turn two, sneak ninja into play. Opponent could have their own unsummon potentially, or could just be an opt. But we get to replay Ornithopter to set up a future ninja. And Inquisition's looking good. Right, there's the opt. If they play a creature, we've got plenty of ways to remove it. Another ninja, so kick things off with Inquisition. Uh -huh. So Narset seems annoying. Murder Rider also annoying, but probably less so than Narset. Draw two. So they can murder Strider my ninja. They probably have to do it now if they don't want to get punished by own summon. They could also cast Murder Strider as a blocker, but that's not gonna play out well for them. Opponent just goes for Ashiok instead, surprisingly. Alright, let's attack. And uh, don't really care about Ashiok too much. Just go face. Lots of fatal pushes that don't do much here. But Unsummon can still be used to save my ninja if they try and take it out.
Another ninja. And let's go face with everyone. And then I can still unsummon one of my ninjas that they try and kill and ninjutsu it back with the other ornithopter. This will also fizzle the adventure so they don't get the 2-3 lifelink half. If one of these ninjas was Infiltrator instead, we would have been drawing even more, but still seems good enough. Opponents digging, maybe they've got a sweeper that can get them out of this. They do not, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with uh, fine hands. Kick things off with Fairy Seer. And I do want to land. I don't know yet if I need Fatal Push in this matchup, so I'm gonna probably bottom it here. And then we can See if we want to Inquisition Outcast or get the Infiltrator going. Upside of waiting on Infiltrator is that next turn we could be hitting with two ninjas to draw two right away, or we can even set up the Messinic Naga. So I kind of like the Inquisition line here. Uh huh, put on a land destruction deck. Okay. And they've got a sweeper with Draconic Intervention. So now I'm probably in favor of Naga to just kill the opponents a little sooner. Thoughtseize can take their sweeper, which is our main concern. Draw three. Make two tokens. And take Intervention. There's something to be said for just taking Chandra, because if we take Intervention and they top deck another one, they can actually use it, whereas now they don't have an instant or sorcery in the graveyard. So yeah, maybe I do just take Chandra. And hope they don't draw like an Anger of the Gods, I guess. And... Uh... Sure, another Naga seems fine. And that does it. Alright, sweet. So, quick game here against Red Green. And yeah, the games today have definitely shown the importance of keeping a hand that has both an enabler and a payoff card. So both the one mana or zero mana creatures and one of our ninjas, we have 12 of each. So ideally our opening hand has one of each category for our deck to function optimally. And then in the meantime, hopefully we can piece together a bit of interaction to keep the opponent off balance. And we can draw additional cards and make additional ninjas in the meantime. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.